Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna do a Jap Japan guide. It's uh, kind of light, I guess, because well, this update has been on for this bit of rages, um, but that is partly because I haven't played that much until recently, and also I've been very sick, and I'm finally getting better. That's good. And uh, yeah, also Japan is an interesting nation because I feel like. You uh, you have so many different options for a nation. There's not one single strategy that you can do do repeat all the single time every single time in multiplayer and so on. Because there's just so so much you can do. You can choose all of these decisions are all of them are amazing. And you have to pick and choose them. You can't get all of them. And the focus tree allows you to go down so many different routes. But uh, I played Japan uh, quite a bit, and I have this kind of basic idea of. Uh, what I think works most of the time for them, and uh, it will not do a single strategy. I'll talk about some of uh, the other stuff you can do to change around the strategy. But uh, basically, we're gonna go down Perch or Kedota faction for the Chinese war, and that is because that's the only one route that allowed in multiplayer, so it makes most sense. And uh, I'm gonna start with that because I don't want to. Uh, immediately go down the naval parts because I'm not gonna do uh, try to fight let's say this is more I'm not gonna uh, try to contest the naval power yet at least for them so I'm not gonna start that off immediately I don't even have that many good boats to produce you have a battleship here and the light and heavy cruiser and even the carrier but it's like uh, you really want to produce either the super heavy Yamato or the or the 1944 carrier in my opinion as Japan if you want to have a chance versus USA, because we're going to be producing carriers at a rapid rate. And the easiest is to produce this super heavy battleship because you get the bonuses for it immediately. To just research it, you can research it in about 1937, around that time, if you go this one into this one into here. So that's a decent strategy if you want to focus on the boat part. And then I would recommend also picking up a prioritized steel for guns quite early. That would really help out. Uh, if you're not going to do that, I would suggest building civilian factories. I would build some either way if you're going boats. Just because the civilian industry is so important early on for Japan because you only have 25 civilian factories. For research, you have 4 research slots which gives you a lot of options. I would recommend doing either uh, researching the planes here, start off with maybe some research bonuses uh, and industry. Or possibly getting... Uh, Get the 1936 destroyer if you want to do more boat style. And there's another strategy that you could do that I haven't talked about, and that is if you. In War of China, you really have two main options. Well, three main options. Two basic ones either you go down Grand Valley and pick up these four first ones, they're the most important for this war. And possibly go down further left here if you wish to get the extra planning so you can defend against the USA later, but that's not important for this war. Or, I would recommend you going down superior firepower, focusing on artillery, and going down right here and then left here for the heart attack. Possibly going right here, but it will make you a lot weaker when you're then fighting the USA, because you, you kind of need a heart attack to fight them off. And uh, if, you're not, if you want to do something spicy, you could go down mobile, mobile warfare and pick up light tank 2 and light tank 2 with uh, self-propel. What this would will allow you to do is spam out a lot of tanks to just steamroll China here in the beginning. Push through this very, very important first state and just leverage that into a total domination here in the east. It will be quite hard the longer the war drags on because you're gonna be running out of tanks. You gotta sometimes switch over to boats if you even wanna have a chance. But it's a decent strategy, especially if China is a player. I would definitely take a look at this. If you're not experienced at the game or haven't played Japan a lot, I would not do this. But uh, if you have played China, uh, Japan a lot, I would recommend trying this out. You want uh, Light Tank 2 and probably just self propelled Artillery 1 is fine enough. You could pick up the second one. It's better. It's definitely a lot better. 42 versus 34. But uh, the extra production, it's and. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's you, it's your choice. It will you will get it a bit later, but it's not that much. So you could pick up light tank to self propel as well. For me, I'm gonna just do something basic, getting up the industry very early on, just so getting that and run, and picking up superior firepower so we can be more on the offensive, making sure we win quick in China, 
and uh, well, we will be worse with this for states, but that's fine. And for the final one, I'm gonna pick up. I'm gonna probably gonna pick up this airplane because I want to get some of them up. We're not gonna have any air bases here. To we only have this one to fight with China, but when we pick up this f first one here, we're gonna have total air domination over them if we just build the planes. Four factories here. I would just put all the boats as I usually do here. Maximum output from on one, just so we start produce finish up what they've started. And uh, for rest here, I'd probably just leave it to fires here for now and focus on just equipping my troops with s uh, guns and artillery. Possibly adding one here. I'm not actually sure if I want to do that, but we can try. For the army, I would recommend deleting everyone except one, so we can train them up. In the beginning, I usually don't delete the marine because I feel like getting us getting a seasoned. I mean, regular marine is worth it. All of these guys on the islands too, everything needs to be deleted. Is anyone not equipped? Yes, you here. Is that it? No. Great. Let's delete all of these guys except the one. Put them on training. And let's start up time. As you can see here we're gaining army experience at a rapid rate. Which is nice. We're gonna gain it a bit slower because the division is smaller than if I choose this one. So I'm actually that that I'm gonna switch that one. It's like it's just not worth it. I'm gonna be gaining a lot more by doing this. So we're gonna upgrade this troop then. And yeah, in terms of uh, resources, I would not really ch trade for a lot. I'm going to in the soon trade for Manchuku steel, but I'm not that far in a deficit. So I'm not gonna do it. Maybe when I reach ten or twelve, for now it's fine. For the USA here, I would delete the trade with them. And instead put it on either Mexico, Venezuela, or Dutch East Indies. Maybe split it up between those. It really depends. But something like that. And yes, this steel here. I could trade for it. It's not that important. It basically just allows you to produce your boats a bit quicker. But we're kind of trash, so I don't really care. Now, now it's starting to be important. So we're going to find... Where's he? Where's my boy? Wait, I want, let's see, Africa, Asia. Here, you have him. Oh, we got a sword from by export, right? Oh, we have all of his steel now. Extra. Bump up this trade. And let's get out the civilian factories. I have tried a diff some different building strategies for China, uh, for Japan, I mean. And uh, most of them, some of them is trying to do some refineries, some with trying to get some more infrastructure, because Jap China has one major downside, and that is that they don't have any resources. That's their main problem. They have a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff with, uh, with Japan. They can easily expand. They have decent factories, and uh, they have a good strategic point, and they're hard to invade. The problem with them, and now I would pick up guide beside Beatus, it gives you civilian factories, and allows you to construct them even faster and get you some output, so it's, it's just some nice bonuses. Upgrading this unit, we're gonna go for a quite artillery heavy build, if it's allowed, otherwise just do 4 artillery, because you're not gonna need an anti-tank right now. And I'm gonna delete these templates here, because I'm not gonna be using them. I'll keep these two around. For first political power, we're gonna try and pick up this workhorse. First off, before we're gonna do any of these decisions, we're not that important to rush, in my opinion. And, uh, so, well, was, what was I talking about? I can't remember. Oh, well, interesting. Oh, right, the good, the good part of being Japan. You have manpower, you have easy to expand, you have good, a decent amount of factories, a good navy, and, uh, well, easy to defend. Bad part is you don't have any natural resources, you need to capture them. And the easiest ones to capture are using Guangxi Click, after that Indochina, and after that it's the Dutch East Indies and British Malaya. And that's basically what you want to do, try to secure all of this area, all of the resources and uh, harvest their potential. Try to use as much as possible of it. You're not going to be able to trade with anyone when you're at war with the US, we're going to basically kill, blockade you. Depending on how much USA holds in on you, because USA has to focus on usually Germany and Japan at the same time, 
if it try to all in you, you're probably gonna get stomped. But I mean, you can just hold out for as long as possible and uh, hope for the best. In terms of navies here, I usually just gather up navies in three different spots, take the subs off on all of them, and move the subs away to a new fleet. Let's say this one here, for now at least. In Hiroshima here, we have we have this sub fleet that can move away. Add some more subs. The subs um, for now we're gonna put in a new one, and we'll see what we do with them later. All of these boats here, we don't really want them here, so we can move them into Hiroshima. And down here is our third and final fleet. Gonna gather them up, and yes, that's fine. With here, we're not gonna get enough. Well, let's just not trade one with them. Because we want good trade deals. That's fine name, I guess. I like when we're called uh, the first, or whatever, the first, the second. Uh, it's fine. Get you, let's get you, let's get the, all these subs out. And we have this here guy here that gives wolf pack, which is a decent bonus, I think. Move these boats over. Okay, this is done. Let's pick up some more of that. And here we have a, yeah, an option that I think is pretty easy for Japan, but some people think it's, uh, I don't know, most people probably think it's easy. I like probably dispersed if strat bombers are allowed, and if they're not allowed I would go concentrated. So because it's single player I'm gonna go concentrated. And why I'm not going dispersed for the bonuses with attention is because I'm not gonna go tanks. It's usually if I go tanks or all in on planes, I wanna get their attention so I can switch them out uh, a lot and often. But because I'm just gonna do a standard build, I think I'd rather take the extra. I'm here, pick up the workers. I'd much rather take the extra factor output. In terms of navies here, do we have anything that's not am right? Yes, we have two fleets. Let's move them to the second fleet. Here. And they're all destroyers, so that's fine. Let's merge these up. And down here, we're gonna need a captain, an admiral, whatever. Gonna put these on the third fleet because it's the smallest of them, so we would just wanna bump it up so it's not that shit. Okay, now we have some extra factors. Now, you, I would always build these civilians in the beginning, and as soon as you get this one, well, about now, I would consider either, either switching from civilians to producing naval dock guards, military factories, or possibly refiners if you wanna do a lot of planes. Um, thing is though, with that, is you can pick up the Dutch East Indies if you're good at the game, so you wouldn't need them for later, but if that fails or if you need it before then, I would consider getting some refiners. But I'm gonna build a couple more of these uh, civilian factories, because I feel like they... I really want a better industry, only, and because we're gonna try to pick up the total mobilization very early, we're gonna have no consumer goods almost, and a lot of construction speed, and uh, it will make it so when I build these civilians most of them even go to production so it's mostly a win I think getting one extra artillery here and uh, we could remove this one and add two more artillery if you want it's gonna be really expensive though and because of the kind of tr crappy land I would either stay here at four go up to five and get one uh, anti-tank but that's probably what we want to do later when we fight the US. For now, I'm probably just going to actually stay with two or two infantry, just because it's really bad infrastructure when you get deep into China te Chinese territory. We're going to have 95% surrender limit as well, so it's going to be really hard to capitulate them. So I believe that that's correct. Now here, you have the option of going down more industry, but I actually f don't think that's necessary. We aren't prioritizing as much of building. No, it's more sh mo mostly right now it's mo mostly building new factories it's not getting the factories really they have strong so i'm gonna wait a bit on picking up these and also here you have the option of uh, getting these bonuses i would and for the bonuses here i would consider either going naval dockyard or the seal for guns both of them are very good so it's your choice for the next one here i think you should always go for naval air construction just because it's 20 percent and you're probably going to be building a lot of carrier fighters 
So getting them cheaper is better, in my opinion. The tactical bombers and close air support, it's just not worth it really, I think. Down here we either had two manpower or some output. I would always go for the manpower. So that's always fair. And here it's always naval. So these counter out each other. If you don't know how this uh, rivalry works, it's... If you choose all of them on naval, the naval is going to get a lot stronger and you're going to get so many penalties for, for the army. So it's really not worth it. You should always try to be in the middle, in my opinion, having it balanced. For the final one, it's a toss-up, I think. But I usually think the naval one is better, just because the attack is easier to naval pen. So that means I would rather take the bottom one, the naval, and then the army. And here it's the naval. So this means that I should pick the army here, just so it all counters out. If you want to get these dockyards, I would. This one I think is the most um, is the best one to switch out. So don't have a five percent attack instead. Have a bit more of them. I think that's it's it's close. So here I'm um, because of that. I'm gonna pick up these four factories now. I think getting the factories earlier is better than later. So I would recommend getting them around now. We're gonna get some more guns, some more factories, and one more on the fighter because we're almost finishing up the research here. Getting the extra research slot early, so we can make good use of it. The research slots are very important to pick up. Even though it doesn't lead directly down to this total mobilization, it's definitely worth it. The total mob is not that good. The research slot, in my opinion, is just amazing. And it's of highest priority. I'm not actually gonna talk a lot about how to do the war with China, I'm just gonna tell you how to do the beginning parts because in this new update I think they made it the beginning parts a lot harder, not a lot harder, a bit harder than it used to be and after that they made it so much easier. And here I would consider picking up some boats because you're always gonna do some form of boats, either the Doctrine or the, the boat itself. I'm gonna go for the Destroyer here and I'm gonna bump up this plane to a better plane and we're also sometime gonna uh, pick up this uh, this plane we're gonna get this zero plane for free later on so you no real re reason to research the fighter 2 except if you wanna get the fighter 3 which you probably want I guess sometime okay, now this unit is basically done we're gonna get the artillery and then we're gonna start making the marine Marine is gonna be looking exactly the same, but with Marines instead of infantry, so that's really easy to remember. And uh, gonna get as many of these Marines out as possible for the war. You wanna start the war as late as possible, if you can. If most rules says you have to do it before 1938. If you're allowed, you should do it. The, in my opinion, the best is to do it about April or May 1938. Is when I like to do it. But uh, if you have to do it earlier, you should just start it up. You don't actually have to do any fighting. You just have to declare the war. And uh, well, for the war itself, the strategy is very simple. You, as Japan, you have huge bon uh, penalties for fighting versus China. And they have huge penalties for fighting overall. You can check here. You get minus 50 attack versus them. Which is kind of terrible. It is. So you really want to try to avoid getting those penalties, and how you do that is through decisions. And now we're actually going to pick up the construction speed here, just because it's uh, going to make it so we can produce just more factories. I don't really think it's important yet to get. We're still we're basically on our max here, but it's just not enough factories for it to make it a real difference. I think get this support one here. So what you want to do is there's your yeah and then for to get rid of these penalties you have there's you get decisions and you just press it it costs 25 pp and it makes it so it lowers these penalties and the final one uh, gives you 20 percent division attack which is um, really good combined with a focus we're going to pick up very soon which gives you 10 percent attack here. This all stacked together makes it so you have 30 percent attack and these guys have minus 50 defense. And how they get rid of their penalties through arm XP, but you don't give them arm XP because you don't attack them. So what you want to do is you never attack the Chinese until you've picked all your decisions. And it will take some time, it will give the US a lot of bonuses, it will give them a shit ton of war support. But it's worth it because if you will lose literally zero men, the war will not last that long and you're gonna really easily just roll over them. Roll over them. We're gonna keep picking up this, this research time now, just because we have a time. Really don't think there's anything else important. 
in terms of here, we're gonna pick up War Industrialist, probably now, just because uh, I feel like we're gonna s stop building civilians. We have a decent amount right now, 31, let's compare that to someone like Italy. You can see here, we have more than him. Less, it's about the same level as G G Germany. And you wanna try to take a look at GK, because they're the only ones you can really compare your stats to. To see how strong you are. You're usually gonna be stronger than them. In USA, you're gonna try to match them in uh, literally nothing. You, literally, you can't match them. In the early game, you could, not in dockyards. But uh, yeah, we're gonna pull way ahead of you. So what you want to just first of them, you just want to survive. But here, I'm gonna pick up this war industrialist. I wanna start building out, building some military factories, and then start building dockyards. While uh, just because we can't really build dockyards with this penalty, so we're gonna take uh, the time to build military them and uh, build dockyards when we don't have the penalty. <laughs> For the next one, I'm gonna probably try to pick up this uh, special air attack and defense in terms of here, just because I really don't want to get army strengthened even more. Because if, let's see here if we do that, we would get minus 10% more dockyard, minus 10 dockyard output, uh, dockyard construction again, and research time plus for dockyard for naval stuff. And I really don't think that's worth it getting all those penalties. You get some slight bonuses for your army, but I really don't think it's worth it. Look at focuses here. Wanna pick up this total mob. Only problem is we're gonna start demobilizing, so you immediately wanna pick up the spiritual mobilization, so you don't demobilize your troops. And to see here, we have a lot of different stuff. Probably only gonna need more artillery in the coming war. Our, our guns are probably gonna be fine. And Around this point, I would say it's a decent time to start rebuilding your troops up. You don't need that much more army XP, and uh, we're gonna get a lot from this focus here. So, 30. So I'm soon gonna st I'm gonna pick up one more thing for this one, and then I'm gonna start building the troops. For the next fo uh, research here, I would recommend pick up concentrated too, just because you want the you're gonna need the space to building these with high infrastructure. And the industry is just good, it's just that before it felt, I feel like, uh, the penalties you get, is, it's not worth it versus just getting some folks, uh, research done here, while you have a time. Could do test for Soviets quite soon, I usually like to wait on that though, a lot. Here you can see we're up in trade, but it's fine, because we're just gonna start, uh, start a carrier production for the third fleet, it only has a carrier right no, zero carriers so zero carriers gonna pick up two of those I usually do boats in here never on f uh, I always want to never have them on uh, infinite and never on out because the AI is trash of pumping them out and here you can just refresh it it's fine if you don't get everything for aluminium trade I'd usually do it with Germany while you can try to try to uh, b uh, push up the uh, Germans, they have this amazing bonus. So them building is a lot stronger than everyone else. We're gonna, really, we're gonna be using that a lot better at least. Okay, we're not actually gonna pick any of these right now because we want the construction speed for the military and also we don't need the civilians anymore. So it's time to build these military. Getting those up, probably not that many. We're gonna stop at some point. We'll need 30 to 35, in my opinion. Look at China here, they are really weak in terms of everything, and they have no fleet. So, there's really no reason to pump out more military factories. It's just overkill, and uh, you should rather instead worry about the USA. Yep, this is spiritual mobilization. Okay, here, now we're gonna stop training this guy and instead we're gonna spam out some divisions. Just as many as we can. Usually, like, available them in different places just so it's easier to remember. 
We're gonna be using that. Uh, we're not really gonna be using this destroyer. We're gonna be using this one, but it's good to have it research. Now we can either go down. Uh, I'll probably just pick up this uh, airplane so we can produce something decent. In here, I probably want the military theorist. It's that or the naval theorist. You can pick and choose however you want here. Could even go for the air theorist just because you're gonna get so much arm XP from fighting this war and don't really need it. So usually I'd pick up a naval or air, and actually, well I think about it, I'm actually not going to pick up the military fears, I feel like the, it's just not worth it for for Japan. This assault aviation guy is really good because you get the operational integrity doctrine, but he costs so much, so I, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to do this air fears one, start researching some air doctrine quite soon. And in terms of air doctrine, I would either recommend going down... The middle one, if you want to just have use cast for China and not really after that, then I would pick up the fir first three and just stop. But if you actually want to use planes, carriers, and stuff like that, I would definitely go down the right side. Just because you get this 20% fighter agility, which is just insane. They should really nerf this focus to give 15%, because that would make it so nations would have a reason to go left or middle, depending on what strategy. Right now, most people just go right for the agility and don't really think about it, but hey. But yeah, I'm probably gonna end the video here. This is basically, I've talked a lot about different things you can do as Japan. It's really hard, so if you have any other suggestions, you can put them in comments. And yeah, right now what you want to do is just build up your army, do naval missions in this area of China, have troops in reserve that can just fill out the ranks. Uh, so you have, want to have like 10 troops, pull out your marines, naval made a new guy, pull, put in 10 troops, do that all around here, the coast, push down here south when you have the bonuses and everything. And yeah, that's basically it. It's really easy. So hopefully you've enjoyed. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.